for the um, for presenting me. Um, the talk will be about uh, a non coders guide to, to open source contributions. My name is Mario Garcia. I'm joining the, the event from Mexico. I'm a Git Cracking Ambassador. You can find me on, on Twitter as Mario GND, or, or if you want, if you have uh, any questions after um, the talk, and you can contact me. Uh, this is my, my email. Well, first I, I want to talk a little about what my open source journey has been. And I chose some of the most important um, things that have happened to me when I first started uh, contributing uh, to open source, to free and open source software, but also how I started uh, with uh, promoting these kind of technologies. My first approach to free and open source software was 15 years ago uh, when I was in college. I, I was taking a, a class when I learned about how to um, install uh, Ubuntu. That was my first uh, distribution, my first Linux distribution. And then two years later, uh, when after spending some time learning more about uh, this operating system and understanding what free and open source software was and why it's so important for for so many reasons i have the i had the opportunity to to get, to give my first tech talk uh, this was at a local event but this is an event that is organized across Latin America. And then I, I just have had the opportunity to join a, a few open source projects. The last one was a few uh, months ago when I joined uh, Terminus DB as an, as an intern. I spent four months there, but the talk is not about that. How we can start how can we start contributing to, to open source? That's the question that I want to answer here with this talk. I mean, um, if you're starting a career in, in technology, a uh, way to, to improve your skill and especially your coding skill is to start contributing to, to open source. But for people with a non-technical background, there are, there are so many opportunities to start contributing to open source. Well, if you found a, a project you love and want to help, some things that you have to bear in mind is that um, coding skills are not required. I mean, you don't have to learn a programming language if you want to contribute. You, you don't have to install another operating system. You can start contributing with um, the operating system that you are using now, and you don't have to learn another uh, language. And I, I, I will talk about this uh, a little bit later, but um, it is not necessary that you uh, learn another language like English, for, for example. And you, and you don't have to be an expert, but you have to be excited about learning new stuff and sharing with the community. And that is something important about that. Some areas where you can contribute are code. And this, the first one is especially for people that, uh, that are starting a career in technology, but also for people that are interested in learning more about, uh, about, uh, coding, but if you come from a non-technical background, there are other areas where you can contribute, like, like design, documentation, localization. You can provide support or, or mentorship. You can uh, 
spread the word about any technology or any project that you want to get involved with. You, you can organize events like the event we are uh, joining today. But first, let's talk about documentation. You can start contributing to open source in with writing documentation. You can uh, write articles or, or tutorials, or you can contribute directly to the documentation available uh, of any project that, that you want to contribute to. You can, um, well, if you decide that you want to start writing articles or tutorials, this don't have to be uh, technical. You can write an opinion about a project. You can provide feedback to, through an article. You can um, write tutorials about how to install anything, or if you um, are using any free and open source software, how you solve the, the problems that you, that you face when trying to install uh, any software. And that's the way that, that you can contribute uh, with documentation to, to any uh, project. But also you can make improvement to the documentation by keeping it up to date, make corrections. Uh, for example, you can uh, report typos. If, if there is any typo, you can um, report that. So maintainers or contributors can um, correct that uh, that errors in the documentation. But also you can help trans translate the, the documentation to any other language. And well, uh, this is just an example. Uh, I One of the ways that I contribute to open source is writing about any technology that, that I'm trying. And what I focus on is how I, I can solve uh, any problem that I could have when trying to configure um, my development environment. And this is one of the last blog posts that I published a few uh, weeks ago. Well, talking about localization, something that I mentioned when I was uh, in London two years ago when I was speaking at GitLab Commit London is how important is localization for any open source project, especially if you live in a non-English speaking country. And what I'm, why I'm mentioning this is because most of the content about open source software development or any technology related topic is available in English. And I know that there are efforts to localize tools and documentation, and I want to show some examples about that. So, but it's important that we as project maintainers, content creators, or speakers make sure that our, our projects are available in our native language, especially if you live in a non-English speaking country I mean, I'm in Mexico, and that's why uh, I write articles not only in English, but also in Spanish. And that's the reason why I also present talks in, in both languages. Well, the, this is one of the, the first projects that I um, contributed to when I started contributing to free and open source software. Uh, for, forgot to mention that my first contributions to open source were related with code, but with localization. And I was part of the, the team that, that was uh, translating Firefox from English to Spanish. And this is the platform that, that Mozilla is using for translating Firefox into many languages, but also uh, the platform that Mozilla is using for translating Firefox into indigenous languages. And this is uh, one of the projects that you can also get involved with, especially if you use Firefox and want to give back to, to the project and to the community itself. 
And this uh, is another example. Uh, I'm talking about examples in Spanish. And this is an effort from the Python community to translate the documentation, the official documentation from English to Spanish. And this is the, the work that they are doing with that project. You can provide support. I mean, if you have some experience with um, any technology or, or any project and you know how, how to solve any problem, you can help with that. You can answer questions. If, if you participate in, in any of those uh, platforms like Stack Overflow, Reddit, or if you are part of the forums of any uh, free and open source software, or, or, or if you um, have a blog, you can write uh, about how you solve any, any problems that another user could have when installing anything or when configuring uh, a tool. Um, and and you, you can also uh, answer questions or on your social uh, networks. And, and also you can help solve issues. Uh, and it's not necessary that, that you have experience with code, but as there are issues in related with other areas and this is how you can provide support to any uh, project. Mentorship, this is another way. And, and, and this is uh, talking about people with, um, with that have already some experience with, with open source. Um, well, um, talking about, about this, I, I, when I joined uh, Mozilla Open Leaders, that was a program where you receive a training and mentorship on how to start your own open source project. I, I also had the opportunity to mentor um, a project um, and something I learned from that and why it's so important to provide mentorship is that you can also learn from that experience you can promote your personal and professional development. You can Im improve your communication skills. And I, I was telling you that uh, one of my first tech talks was when I was in college and I, I didn't have a, an idea of what I was doing and how I was supposed to do it, but that helped me a lot on improving my communication skills so when when you provide mentorship it could help you with, with that and you can you can also improve your leadership skills you can expand your connection and, and networks and you can learn from that mentorship experience you can learn from your mentee but also uh, during the process of providing mentorship to any uh, project or person interested in uh, any technology or interested in starting uh, their own open source project. Evangelism is another way uh, to start contributing. And well, uh, my first contributions were in localization, but also with evangelism by spreading the word about uh, some technologies that I that I was using. And um, when I joined the Mozilla community, I started uh, talking about Mozilla and its mission and the projects that that they that they had at, by speaking at some uh, local events and then having the opportunity to speak at some national and international events, uh, sharing about um, the um, projects that I was contributing to when, when I was an, an active contributor uh, at Mozilla. And another way to spread the word is by organizing events like, like the one we are, we are joining today. You can organize meetups, conferences, workshops, hackathons and this could also be an opportunity 
for you to start with public speaking. And as I said before, you don't have to be an expert. You, you can learn a lot from any um, any experience and, and you don't have to have your communication uh, skills um, for, for that, for doing that. And you can also share about the project by sending emails to mailing lists, by sharing on social networks, by sharing with uh, friends and, and family or any group that you're part of, sending uh, messages through messaging apps. And that's how you can um, help with uh, spreading the word about any project or any technology that you are contributing to. And I wanted to talk about code, not because this is um, a way that, that, that you can contribute, but uh, I decided to, to include this because if you are interested in learning about code, in learning any programming languages. Uh, it doesn't matter that you don't have any technical background, you, you can learn during the process. But for those who are interested in, in that, this is uh, the reason why you can also contribute with, with uh, code in, in any project. But something that I forget that I forget to mention is that um, Talking about documentation, there are projects that are not related with software, but uh, are related with any other areas like um, documentation itself, but also uh, with uh, open hardware. That's another area where you can get involved with. Um, but, but talking about documentation, I've seen so many projects that are focused, for example, on writing a book or helping translate any book or, um, for example, from English to Spanish or any other language. So the community have uh, more access to that content. And that's, that's what I was mentioning when I talk about um, localization that is a, an important area where you can get involved with but um, well talking about code why is um, in, well why you, you can involve with um, any project with code is because you, you can have the opportunity to learn to gain experience if you're interested in any technology, you can learn about that technology by getting involved with a project uh, and contributing with code and, or contributing with, with the documentation. That's an opportunity to learn about any technology that you are interested in. You can gain experience, but you can also expand your, your network. How you can do that is by reporting a box helping fix a uh, box, but also help with implementing new features. Especially if you, well, if you have some previous experience with any um, programming language, this is how you can uh, get involved with. And where to start? There, there are a few uh, websites that you can go to and check for any projects that uh, where, where you can look for any issues, any open issues uh, that you can um, help uh, solve. Uh, so there are few. You have ten minutes to wrap up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and this is uh, some some websites that you can go to and check for any issues and. For those with no previous experience, look for issues that are tagged this way, that, uh, that good for each first issue, how wanted, or first timers only. This is just a list of uh, 
a, a few uh, websites that you can check. And, uh, well, we get to translate this web. Well, doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Um, some websites that I also recommend if you want to get more information about what I mentioned during the talk. And you, uh, uh, GitHub has, has an open source uh, guide where you can find information about how to start with open source, how to start contributing, and you can also uh, find some resources uh, at opensource.com. And for for learning about Git, Git is a, a tool that you can, uh, well, that sometime in your um, process contributing to open source that you will have to learn. So GitLab and GitHub uh, have uh, some um, websites for that. And talking about Git, um, uh, well, um, I, I would like to recommend Git Kraken. That is a tool, a graphical tool that you can use to um, contribute to an open source project or sending your changes to any uh, uh, open source repository. Uh, and you don't have to learn about the uh, commands uh, related with Git that you will have to type in the command line or Linux terminal. Well, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please let me know.